Alright, don't have much time, and, uh, you know, really don't want to do this over and over again. Anyway, another Hoffa Day video, so I played half of it, um, it, it's just, there's, there's, he thinks my obligation is to logically demonstrate some sort of axiom, um, and, um, I don't have to. What I'm saying is, I'm saying there's logic that connects these, these observations. So, you know, what is explicitly an axiom and what is an axiom based on some sort of logical connections, you know, th it's a vague line, but it doesn't really matter. The point is, I'm saying, draw me a logical picture, demonstrate, you know, it's, it, if somebody makes a claim and they claim it's logical, it's really easy to dispute it if it is, in fact, illogical. That's my argument. Give me the evidence that it's illogical. Okay, not your counter bullshit. So anyway, let's go through this again. <clears throat> I mean, I'll draw a picture. I don't know what else to do. Uh, you know, and I don't even know how... You know, I thought I made it pretty clear before, and uh, but I'll make it clearer. This is a description of reality. I mean, again, let me emphasize. I am totally disinterested in your personal values. I'm disinterested in what makes you feel something. Okay? If you need a fly to say, stop torturing me, please. Okay? Um, if you're pulling its wings off. So the difference for you isn't that the animal is suffering. The only difference is if it says stop, you'll stop. And if it doesn't say stop, you won't stop. What I'm saying, if, is, if the fly could actually speak, like if a human being had no vocal cords and couldn't say stop, would you just keep doing something that was torturing them, even though you know overtly, rationally, logically, that it's suffering, but because it can't say the word stop, you're not going to stop? I mean, that's how ludicrous your premise, your premise is. That somehow I need to have them, some authority tell me um, that they're in pain. That I can't observe it for myself. Anyway, <clears throat> and, and again, so if, if you're not describing reality, then forget it. Okay, if your claim is there is no reality regarding value, and you all just get to make up your theories, like, well, I could just make up the theory that, well, women really don't feel anything, and if you rape one, it doesn't matter. If you think that's a valid theory, because I just made it up and spoke it, and I don't have to in any way make it coherent to any kind of reality, then forget it. What are we going to talk about? It, it's, it's idiotic. I am totally uninterested. If you really believe that it's all relative and that the, the moral nihilism is the truth, okay, then I'm totally in interest, uninterested in your personal fairy tales. You might as well be telling me what your personal god is. It means nothing to me. <sighs> I mean, what emotionally gets to you is so fucking irrelevant to me. I couldn't care the fuck less. Uh, anyway. So there's a game we're playing. Here it is. It's Life on Earth. So let's just make the box. It's in the box. This is where we arrive. Now, we know there's certain things I don't really have to argue, right? Evolution, uh, chemistry, physics... No God, no magical forces, it's a replicating molecule, and once the, the replication starts with the blueprint, it's basically a kind of gladiator war. It's just making toolkits. Toolkit-enabled beasties to go out into the environment and make their way. Alright, and that's all that's going on here. And we know that there's two kinds of things that are alive. Life comes in two forms, right? Feeling and non-feeling, right? Okay, and non-feeling. So, we know that the non-feeling, the non we can just say, okay, it just doesn't matter what happens to them. Yes, they're in a life struggle. Yes, they're trying to survive, they. Um, they're little machines, okay, and the little machine has programming to try to preserve itself. So what? It's a machine. It's of no meaning. It's of no value. If human beings were machines, if they didn't feel... Okay, I, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't care if you pulled its wings off, so to speak. You wouldn't care if you shoved a telephone pole up its ass. You could do anything you wanted to, and it just doesn't matter if it can't feel, and there's no way you're going to tell me how it could possibly matter. 
You could you could entertain yourself in any way, deconstructing them, blowing them up, having them fight with each other, having them do all kinds of insidious, crazy things to each other, incarcerating each other in fucking uh, concentration camps. Who cares if they can't feel and suffer? Who could possibly give a rat's ass that's rational? No one. So we're talking about sentient creatures, okay? And so when there's a feeling thing on planet Earth, okay, there it is, feeling thing, okay, it's experiencing, constantly, constantly, um, you know, uh, puking out, uh, 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 <laughs> creating, all right, really creating feelings. Its brain creates them. Every moment it's alive. That's what I'm saying I have observed having a consciousness. I observe as having a consciousness that my consciousness is creating feelings. I have sometimes moments where I feel quite fine and other times I have moments where I feel quite awful and horrible. And that that's the truth here. And the horrible feelings absolutely suck and are bad and totally nasty. And the good feelings are totally not nasty. And the um, rational, obvious thing is, is this one is negative, just intrinsically, fundamentally, without any fucking... I have no doubt that my negative feelings, me being tortured, would be a bad idea unless you were accomplishing something. It's decidedly negative. It's not irrelevant like a machine. It's not irrelevant like a computer. It's not irrelevant like a, a rock. It's entirely relevant. It's the only thing that's relevant. So the simple argument being made is as the feeling things are all sitting here and they're all different sizes and they're all different shapes and it really doesn't matter because they're all just creating feeling, okay? They're, they're feeling, they're creating this stuff, all right? As I, I use the words golden eggs, but let's make it even simpler. Let's just say matter and antimatter, okay? And, and what we know is is that in the end, if there's more antimatter than matter, we lost the game. That's the game, okay? That's the box. That if, if there's more antimatter in the end, more suffering than comfort, okay, that we lost the game. That's the argument. Tell me, tell me the logical truth could be something else. See, that's what I'm saying to you. That's almost an axiom. That that's the game. The game is the negative stuff are the bad feelings, the positive stuff is the good feelings, and at the end of the day, you have to have enough of this good stuff to justify the bad stuff. In the end. That's the measure of victory or failure. That's the measure. And and that's the the collective problem. So again, I don't want to have to explain the, the fundamental logic of just realizing that I'm not the only feeling thing. Well, go ahead. Prove that I'm not the only feeling thing. Prove to me that there's some reason to believe what I feel is more important than what somebody else feels. Go ahead. Show me a logical argument explaining how it's possible that I'm more important, that my feelings are bigger or better than the other humans. And I don't even think you can make an irrational argument that my feelings are more important than the other mammals. But go ahead, give me your rational, go ahead and try to break the simple logic where I'm saying it doesn't matter whether it's me or them or them or them or them or them. We're all thems, okay? And the fact that my brain, my thinking machine happens to be tied to this personal sentience doesn't mean this sentience is more important. Doesn't mean that the brain should be working for this sentience and no other sentience. The brain should recognize that the value is in this stuff being created, the matter. This is the only stuff that matters, the matter. Okay, the feeling matter, the experience matter. This is the only stuff that matters. And you have to have more pluses, more pluses, more fucking goddamn pluses than minuses. Or you lose. Um, not much of a drawing, I have to concede. But look, this is not that complicated. Alright, my challenge to you isn't to give me your theory of life. My challenge to I mean, I can destroy it because you're going to use words that don't mean anything like respect or something. Um, no, my challenge to you is explain to me why the, how there's one logical misstep in this obviously, this deduction I've made. I'm sentient. Sentience has, from my personal tasting of it, is profoundly important. The only thing that could possibly matter are my feelings. The, without torture, without the capacity to hurt me with feelings that hurt, that I'm indestructible, <laughs> I have no, I, I'm totally invulnerable, and the only thing that gives me vulnerability is the only thing that makes really a difference is my vulnerability to harm. The only way you can extort, extort me to do anything or to 
force me to do anything, is to somehow create harm. Um, so again, it's the only thing of value. And I, I'm making the simple logical deduction that yes, even assholes like you are doing the same thing. Your brain is doing the same creation of a feeling into the world. It's an event. It happens. It doesn't need to be tasted by another human or rubbed up against by another human. All they have to do is acknowledge that a feeling thing is in pain to say, yep, there's some negative happening right now. It's that simple. A, a sensitive thing in pain and you go, ah, negative is happening. Give me a logical frickin' paragraph explaining how that's not the truth. That that's not the reality. Um, so again, the rest of it just comes down to this bullshit of whether your ego means anything. It means absolutely nothing. The only thing that matters is the amount of suffering happening. This other asshole in the comments, you know, I'm, I don't know, he wrote a huge giant pile of shit. And you're just saying... And he's going to you're making a justification for him uh, ripping other people's legs off to to restore one of his legs, and he thinks he's going to make a rational argument defending that because he's still going to argue that somehow his feelings matter and other people's feelings don't. I mean, what can you say? To that? Look at this shit. Look at this. Miles and miles and miles of this absolute fucking goddamn crap. Um, <laughs> you know. It, again, just keeps arguing as if there's, there's, it's all subjective. That the only thing that matters is the individual saying, I don't like it. That's all that matters. The, the individual saying, I'm in pain, or the individual saying, screaming, or whatever the thing they're doing. They have to, in some way, express something, and their expression is what matters. Not what they're feeling, not what causes their expression, not what causes their statement, no, the, their statement matters, and that's the idiotic part here. No, the thing that matters is their suffering, the fact that they endured it, they experienced it, it happened, it's a reality. It's not a figment of their imagination, it's not nothing, it's absolutely something. I'm saying it from my own personal experience, having a consciousness, it's fucking something. You can say it's just an illusion created in my brain, fine, it doesn't matter to me because it's one hell of a fucking illusion. And it's the only thing, it's the only game in the fucking town called the universe. Without this capacity to harm a sentient creature, you don't have anything that matters. And I don't really need to have a conversation about ethics until you're going to concede that. Because without the concession that harm is the only thing that means anything, then there's no fucking point in having a conversation because it can't possibly matter. Because again, if the humans were robots and they didn't feel and they couldn't suffer, why the fuck would I care how many of them were in a concentration camp? Well, I couldn't give a rat's ass. <sighs> Jeez, this is not that complicated. Hmm. So anyway, I'll be back for some kind of part two. I'll read some of this jibber-jabber. Just incomprehensible. And he really keeps using two capital letters to, like, in, you know, make him, oh, this is important. You know, the suffering caused by a specific experience can be measured with X amount of suffering units. The only one who can experience the value that suffering is to its full extent is the sufferer. Well, of course, the sufferer makes the suffering, you shithead. It would be kind of stupid if somebody else had to suffer to prove the existence of the suffering. Wouldn't that make the suffering like double suffering then? If somebody else had to actually suffer to validate that the suffering is suffering? So yes, of course, the, the, you need a sentient to create suffering. Yeah, duh. But that doesn't mean the suffering doesn't exist because you don't personally experience it, you fucking idiot. The full extent. <laughs> full extend. He didn't even get. If you're gonna put something in capital letters, then at least type the right fucking goddamn word. If you're gonna put them in caps, at least get the word right. The full extend is the sufferer. <sighs> Shit. Shit.